Okay, here we are for our next lecture. This is uh, lecture four. And um, the um, last example we worked for unit conversions was um, number two at the beginning of the uh, unit conversion section of the math handout. It was converting 750 feet to meters. Now, number three is to, um, is converting 12 meters per second to kilometers per hour. And I think that actually I'm going to leave this for later because this involves um, converting units on the top and the bottom of a fraction. So these are like compound units. And it is possible sometimes to do that in one step. And well, in fact, actually come to think of it, there is a conversion factor on the uh, conversion sheet that will allow you to do this in one step. So um, on second thought, actually, let's do that now. Converting, because if you have to convert the meters to kilometers and the seconds to hours separately, then uh, that takes several steps and it can get a little complicated. And so I wanna do problems like that later. But fortunately, there is a conversion factor there uh, that allows us to do this in one step. So anyway, convert 12 meters per second to kilometers per hour. <clears throat> the original measurement is 12 meters per second. The units given would be meters per second. These are uh, units of uh, speed or velocity, uh, meaning the distance covered in a given amount of time. So this uh, object, whatever it was, was traveling 12 meters for every second that goes by. And the units wanted would be kilometers per hour. Uh, the official abbreviation for hours is just H, but sometimes I slip and use HR instead. But uh, just keep in mind, they mean the same thing. <clears throat> Actually, um, if you want to pause the video now and look for the conversion factor on the sheet, you will find that there is a conversion factor between kilometers per hour and meters per second. Okay, so if you've had a chance to look, hopefully what you found was one kilometer per hour is equal to 0.2778 meters per second. And so that's what we're going to use. So you set it up uh, like we have before. You take the original measurement, that is the units given with the associated number, 12 meters per second. And then you set up your conversion factor. <coughs> uh, since uh, the the since we're basically using a conversion factor that allows us to convert the top unit and the bottom unit at the same time, we're going to treat kilometers per hour as if it's all one unit, and meters per second as if it's all one unit, because we're converting. But it, it, you know, even though each of them is actually made up of two units. Kilometers per hour is made up of kilometers and hours, and meters per second is made up of meters and seconds. But since we're converting both of those units at the same time, top and bottom, we can treat them as if they're one unit. So 12 meters per second, that whole thing is equivalent to being in the numerator. <clears throat> For the conversion factor, that means we want the meters per second side on the bottom. Okay, so 0.2778 meters per second on the bottom. And on the top, it would be one kilometer per hour. And then what this means is that meters per second will cancel out as a unit because you've got it on the top here and on the bottom there. So dividing it by itself cancels out. And we end up with our uh, units of kilometers per hour. 12 divided by 0.2778 
gives us 43.1965 uh, That's a little excessive on the whole um, significant figures front since 12 only has two significant figures. 0.2778 has four. So two is the limit we're allowed to have in the answer. So we're going to have to change this to two significant figures. That means the four and the three stay. Everything from the one on has to go. And the first number we're dropping is a one. It's less than five, which means it has no effect on the numbers in front up before it. So 43 kilometers per hour would be the correct answer here uh, to the correct number of significant figures. 43 kilometers per hour. Okay, so when you have compound units like meters per second, you can change them to other compound units like kilometers per hour in one step if you have the right conversion factor. But you would need a conversion factor between those two compound units, something that will convert the top and bottom unit at the same time. Otherwise, there are ways where you could go through and change um, meters to kilometers and seconds to hours separately, and you should end up with the same result. But like I said, that gets more complicated, so I'm going to wait a while before showing that. <clears throat> On the following page, um, it's called Additional Conversion Problems. And the page after this gives the answers, but don't look yet. So under additional conversion problems, there are, um, let's see, several of them. Uh, um, actually, uh, I'm going to work on the uh, first four, because the first four are pretty easy. And then we'll do the rest of them after that. So the first four is we want six liters to gallons. to 240 kilometers to miles. Fifty-nine centimeters to feet. And four. Twelve meters to inches. Okay, so um, this would be a good place for you to pause the video and try to do each of these in turn. Uh, there should be, I believe, I'm pretty sure that there are conversion factors in the list given at the end of the map handout that would allow you to do each of these in one step. So um, I'm pretty sure you should be able to do that. So uh, um, try that and we'll get back together when you're done. Okay, so pause the video and um, and okay, so if you're back now, <clears throat> for um, six liters to gallons, uh, I'm going to actually turn to the last page and see uh, liters and gallons are both units of volume. So you go down the list and look under volume. And here you've got first is a conversion between liters and quarts. You could possibly use that one because you could convert six liters to quarts, and then hopefully knowing that there are four quarts in a gallon, you could go from quarts to gallons. But if you go down the list, it gets even better. <clears throat> one gallon is equal to 3.786 liters. So there you go, that you can do it in one step now. So down here, we've got number one, six liters, that's the units given, and I'm going to put it over one just to remind us that this is in the numerator. Then we need our conversion factor, and hopefully we'll end up with something in gallons. <clears throat> um, liters is in the numerator for our units given, so we want liters 
in the denominator for the conversion factor. And gallons should be in the numerator because that's what we want our answer to be. And when we take the number, uh, first of all, make sure that the units cancel out correctly. Liters do indeed cancel with liters, and we do end up with gallons as the only unit left over. <clears throat> and then for the, um, and numerically, it's just 6.0 divided by 3.786. And that gives us 1.58478054. That's what your calculator says it is. But that's too many significant figures. Actually, there's a hint way up at the top of the page where it actually says all of the answers should have two significant figures. So uh, that's a pretty good bet that they should have two significant figures. <clears throat> That's in this case, it's because of this number here. 6.0 is uh, two significant figures. The zero at the end counts because there is a decimal point. 3.786 would be four significant figures. The one gallon is an exact number, so that's infinite. So yeah, two it is. Uh, that means the one and the five can stay. Everything from the eight on has to go but the first number we're dropping is greater than five. So the number before it has to go up by one. Uh, so 1.6 gallons would be our answer. So uh, hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Number two. We've got, um, I'm gonna come back up here to write the conversion factor, 240 kilometers to miles. <clears throat> there, uh, these are that, uh, units of distance or length. And if we look down here for kilometers and miles, we have, oh, there we go. Uh, about a little more than halfway down. One kilometer is equal to 0 0.621 miles. Or, or one mile is equal to 1.609 kilometers. You could use either one of these conversion factors. In fact, I'll do it both ways so that you can see that it works. Our original number was 240 kilometers. And then we need a conversion factor and we hope that we will end up with miles. The first conversion factor is that there's one kilometer for every 0 0.621 miles. Oops, it's right there. Uh, so let's see, kilometers are in the numerator here. So we want kilometers in the denominator in the conversion factor. And that means miles would be in the numerator, which would give us miles as the unit for the answer. So that's a good sign. 240 times 0.621 would be 149.04. Uh, as it said at the top of the page, though, all of these answers should have two significant figures. And that, in this case, is because of the 240. Uh, note that there was no um, decimal point in that number. So that only counts as two significant figures. So we have to cut this down to two significant figures. That means the one and the four can stay, but everything from the nine on has to go. The nine is greater than five, so that means the number before it has to go up by one. And so that's one five so far. And the nine is before the decimal point, so it has to be replaced by a zero to maintain the magnitude of the number. And there we are, 150 miles. Be sure not to put a decimal point in there, though, because then it would become three significant figures. <clears throat> uh, so 150 with no decimal point. Let's try the problem using the other conversion factor, and um, we'll see how that works out. We start with 240 kilometers, and that's in the numerator. And we use our conversion factor, and we're hoping to uh, get miles out as an answer. That means uh, if we're using the second conversion factor right here, 
Uh, kilometers still has to go in the bottom, but now it's 1.609 kilometers and one mile in the numerator. So kilometers do indeed cancel out, and you do have miles as the answer. And if you take 240 divided by 1.609, you get 149.169695. And now that you might think compared to this, that's a different number. But actually, let's see what happens here. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, let's see what happens here. We're still limited to two significant figures because the original number didn't have a decimal point in it. So 240 with no decimal is two significant figures. We're going to have to round this number off. The one and the four are okay, but everything from the nine on has to go to, to make it two significant figures. Once again, nine is greater than five, so the four has to become a five. And you replace the missing nine with a zero to maintain the magnitude. And oh, look, what do you know? It comes out the same. It comes out the same to the proper number of significant figures. <clears throat> um, if you take the answer all the way out to everything the calculator tells you, uh, it, the number will start being different, but it starts being different at the point where uh, you're beyond the proper number of significant figures. So in other words, the differences between these two numbers here are not real. We just think that the numbers are different because the calculator doesn't understand significant figures. But when you cut them down to the proper number of significant figures, they are exactly the same. They only seem different. <clears throat> okay, so uh, number three was 59 centimeters to feet. Uh, coming up here, we'll see if we can find a conversion factor between centimeters and feet. These also are lengths or distances. There we go. Third one down. One foot is equal to 30.5 centimeters. So we can use that and we can do it in one step. We have 59 centimeters, and as a number standing on its own, that's equivalent to being in the numerator. We multiply by a conversion factor, and we will hope to be getting out feet. We have our conversion factor up here. Uh, one foot is 30.5 centimeters. Centimeters should go in the denominator because the centimeters was in the numerator here, and you want it to cancel. And the feet will go in the numerator because that's what we want the answer to be. So centimeters and centimeters cancel. <clears throat> and when we take 59 divided by 30.5, we get 1.93442623, which is a little beyond two significant figures. Uh, again, uh, two significant figures because of the 59. That obviously only has two significant figures. And uh, the 1.9 can stay, but everything from the three on has to go. Three is less than five, so it has no effect on the numbers before it. So 1.9 feet would be the answer to the proper number of significant figures. Okay, uh, 59, so 59 centimeters is uh, 1.9 feet. And uh, next we are going to do number four. Uh, number four is convert 12 meters to inches. Okay, so we have to go to the uh, conversion sheet and see if we can find something between meters and inches. Uh, second one is centimeters and inches. Um, feet, centimeters. Um, what is it again? Meters and inches. Meters and inches. Uh, oh, there we go. About halfway down. One meter is equal to 39.4 inches. Okay. So one meter is 39.4 inches. That should make it pretty simple. 12 meters. And remember, as a number that's standing on its own, that's equivalent to being in the numerator. And 
uh, let's see, for the conversion factor, we want meters on the bottom, so that was one meter, and we want inches on the top, so one meter is 39.4 inches. And that should give us inches as the unit because meters cancel out. Meters on the top, meters on the bottom will cancel out, leaving us inches on top. So there we go with that. If we take, um, let's see, 12 times 39.4, we could ignore the ones on the bottom because, uh, well, even if you actually do divide by one, it's not gonna change anything, so why bother? 12 times 39.4, that gives us 472.8. That's uh, the too many significant figures. That's obviously four. <clears throat> the 12 is only two significant figures, and 39.4 is three. So two significant figures is what we need for the answer. And um, that means the four and the seven can stay, but everything from two on has to go. Two is less than five, so it has no effect on the numbers in front of it but it is before the decimal point, so it has to be replaced by a zero. So 470 inches. No decimal point, because if you put a decimal point in, it's gonna be three significant figures. So uh, this way, the zero at the end doesn't count. So 470 with no decimal. Uh, should be it. Okay, so that is one through four. These are the uh, simpler, simpler ones. Uh, now, uh, number five is another case of uh, kilometers per hour to meters per second. So five is So um, we've done one like this before, so we can try it again. Um, the uh, conversion factor sheet has so much stuff on it that it actually does give us a conversion between kilometers per hour and meters per second. So we can do this in one step, and we don't have to worry about converting the top unit and the bottom unit separately. Uh, this was, um, let's see, this is a unit of speed. So, one kilometer per hour equals 0.2778 meters per second. Okay, uh, so that allows us to do this in one step, like I said. 150 kilometers per hour times a conversion factor equals meters per second, hopefully. I'm gonna put, you know, uh, uh, I'm going to draw the line and put the one on the bottom here for the 150 kilometers per hour, just to emphasize that this is in the numerator. And then for the conversion factor, since kilometers per hour are clearly in the numerator here, uh, for the conversion factor, we're going to want kilometers per hour in the denominator. Okay, so there you go. In the numerator, we will have the other term, which is the meters per second, which is what we want for an answer. So we actually don't want that one to cancel out. So 0.2778 meters per second. Kilometers per hour cancel out. And we are left with 150 times 0.2778. And that gives us 41.67, but because the 150 doesn't have any significant, doesn't have a decimal point, that means that the, um, uh, sorry, that means that it's only two significant figures. So the answer should be two significant figures because this number here is four significant figures. So this, uh, this needs to go down to two. That means the uh, four and the one can stay, but the uh, six and the seven have to go. Notice that the first number you're dropping is uh, greater than five, and so the number before it has to go up by one. So it becomes 42 meters per second. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, 
let's see, there are a couple more conversions there, but we can do those in the next segment of the video. So I'm going to stop the first segment right now, and uh, then we'll pick up with the second in just a moment. So I'll see you then.